back for a new episode of Wolf Legion. Have a special guest today, Mr. William King Hollis, one of the most sought after motivational speakers internationally. Uh, he's known for his entire body of work having over 100 million views across YouTube. Just honored and humbled to have him with us today uh, so we can pick his brain and also receive some, some knowledge and a good word. How you doing, Nick? Man, thank you so much for having me on the show, man. I'm a, I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, all kings building their own platform, for building their own world. And I'm just honored to be on the show, King. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So, yeah, I would love to, for anyone that doesn't yet know about you, I know a lot of people, you've got a lot of fans out there that are watching the work you do. But at the same time, there's a lot of folks that, that haven't heard of you yet. So if you could just briefly uh, speak, speak to that, that would be wonderful. Well, I, I think um, at this point, at this stage of my career, I realized that uh, a lot of people don't realize you got to ask yourself this question. When you're trying to become a speaker, you're trying to be an inspiration. You're thinking about how can I get on the stage with the big dogs? How can I get on the stage with the Nick Vandercheck's, the Gary V's, the Les Brown? And when you start this process, you start to realize that it's much harder than what you think, initially think. You hear what I'm saying? So what I did was I started to bring, I said, if I can't get on the stage with them, I'm going to give the world my voice. So first I gave them my voice without even having my face, my nothing, no, no videos, none of that stuff. And um, uh, uh, basically, King, the internet, YouTube has made a way for individuals that can be sitting in the corner in Timbuktu. And if he got Wi-Fi and he got great content and he's talking about something that the world loves, that kid becomes a star overnight. Wow. So, so basically what I realized in the speaker industry right now, King, um, I think what grew my name and grew my face is social network. That's what, that's what I give um, credit to far as my work because everybody has talent, right? Everybody has an amazing gift, but um, what makes people special is the ones who are seen. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Nobody mm. is more special than anybody. It's just the ones who get seen get put on that platform first. So it's not saying necessarily somebody is better than you. That's why I always go back to the topic where people say, well, who do you chase? I said, I chase legends. <laughs> because if God made me and he made them, I know God didn't make him the best Yes, that this world has ever seen. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. Because God continues to transform and, and create new, new greatness all the time. It's a baby being born right now that's the greatest of all time. That may be the greatest of all time. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just think... Um, like I said, bro, to answer your question, it's the social media, man. It's, it's the internet. Okay, so that's really what's, what's driving everything for you and really helping get the word out. Absolutely. Word of mouth is the biggest advertisement that ever was created. And, and, and YouTube gives it ability to be heard by, think about it. If I'm on eight different YouTube channels and these YouTube channels got 800,000 subscribers, how many people hear me? Mm. If I'm dropping one or two, three speeches on each of these channels a month, add it up. That's over a million people a month. Yes. Now tell tell me, tell me what what was it that inspired you to want to go into to speaking with the the likes of the the Les Browns and the the greats. Man, what I honestly, man, it was a it was a point in my life where, like I said, I was in Redding, PA. I was homeless. Mm. Um, uh, and, and, and I was helping coach this arena football team down there. Uh, no paid gig. It was just an opportunity. I had a crack vertebrae, couldn't play ball. And uh, basically, man, I got, a, I got asked a volunteer to speak to a group of kids. Wow. Um, I walked in within five minutes. Those kids was in tears. Um, walking back to the hotel, dog, literally ready to end my life. I literally had just got done. Basically, pouring my life out to these kids, basically realizing everything I've been through and everything I lost. And that's the day I learned that sometimes when you speak, it's almost like your psychiatrist, man. 
Mm. And it starts to touch me to hear myself talk about these things. That's why I like to tell people, start to talk about the things that you're going through to yourself. You got to say it out loud because once you speak it in the universe, it's like you can, you're putting it on the board so you can see it. Yes. And the only way you can uh, erase something is if you can see it. Right. You get what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and, and, and when, the more you speak is the more you get to see what you got to erase and what you got to remove. But long story short, um, like I said, man, uh, a teacher called me when I got halfway back to the hotel and was like, well, how much you charge to speak? I was like $70, $80 or something like that. Um, about four weeks later, bro, I was doing assembly after assembly. Uh, four years later, leading up to today, King, I'm over 100 million views on YouTube. I was the first speaker to speak during Milan Fashion Week. Um, yeah. Did commercials for Yokohama Tires. And I did all this, King, with zero dollars, man. No marketing money, no nothing. The only thing I had was my voice. I spoke my way out of poverty with this voice. Not a product, not a job, not a degree with this voice. And that's what I mean when I tell people the kingdom is truly voice activated. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Appreciate you sharing that. And, and who, who is it primarily that you want to reach with your, with your messages? I want to, I want to reach the entire world. I believe God gave me a message to touch every individual on this earth. If you're rich and you poor, I take you back to that person that grinded, mm -hmm. that grinded. See, it's something I want to talk to today. And I want to tell you about It's It's called the, um, this, the, 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 the it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, entrepreneur talk that I give, and it's basically, it's called Get Back to the Child That Laid on Your Mother's Lap. Mm. And when we talk about the child that laid on your mother's lap, when you laid on your mother's lap, there was a the child that dreamed. There was a the child that believed. There was a the child that loved something. Yes. And sometimes in life, as we grow as adults, we get farther and further away from who we were and who we were born to be. So we forget the times when we grinded. We forget the times that we thought about our wives. We forget about the people that we worked for, because sometimes as we grow, we lose those people. And when we lose those motivations, we find ourselves trying to find different motivations and different things. And those things are the things that tear us down in life. Negative people, bad friends, right? Yeah. So what happens is we forget the very person that brought us to the greatness that we have today. In the moment that you forget the person that walked a mile before he was that Fortune 500 company owner and got those noodles and got them chips and, and, and got those hot dogs to eat and he didn't have no money, when you forget him, you lose everything. Wow. You lose everything. The object of being successful is never forgetting the pain. Mm. That's real. Just like a muscle. You got to bring that muscle up for it to grow. You got to lift, you got to lift, you got to pump, you got to pump for it to grow. And if you do not do this, you take one second off, you take one to two days off, that muscle will shrink when it took you a whole year to gain it. Yeah. That's you true. get what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Life is very simple, man. It's very simple. But that's, like I said, King, my mission is to turn the ordinary king that believes he's nothing, believes he's not cute enough, believes he's not fast enough, believes he's not smart enough, and turn him into an everlasting king. Yes. Forever. Forever. Because I learned this. Every great leader as an African-American that lost his village, he lost it because he took his brother's voice away. The moment you tell another king to stand behind me instead of standing on side of me is the day you lose your entire organization. Wow. The moment you take a man's voice away is the moment you take his life. That's powerful stuff. God didn't give no one man the answer. He spread them out like puzzle pieces. And our job as a generation of people is to put those pieces together so we can see the big picture. Yes. Yes. Appreciate you sharing that. That's uh -huh. wisdom. And so I'd love to highlight some of the work that you're doing. Uh, that's really why I wanted to, to come on today. Uh, just seeing all the things that you're doing out there, just have so much respect for you. And I know you're helping a lot of people. And Absolutely. 
let's let's uh, shine some some light on the the work that you're doing right now. Uh, if you can well, talk about that. I'm sorry, Kay. Well, yeah, um, man. Right now, man, I, I, my my big my big thing is on gun violence, suicide yes. amongst African young African American males, or young children that's dealing with suicide in general. But the biggest epidemic is in the African American community, so it's it's more it's more precious and dear to my heart. So you know, right now I have this thing called Guns Down, Crowns Up, and what I'm doing what I'm doing with this is I'm basically I'm bringing my event to different cities um, that can't afford to book me. My my fee is five thousand, ten thousand, up to ten thousand, even fifteen, twenty thousand sometimes, um, depending on the size of the venue or the event, and sometimes. I realized this is motivation. Everybody took the top motivational speakers and they made them household names with the rich entrepreneur people. They believed that that was the big motivation was made for the people at the bottom, the broken, the people who who who, who literally is trying to gain oxygen in the world that's sucking it all out of their body. Mm -hmm. So what I realized is a lot of these speakers, I'm the speaker that's gonna make all these other speakers put their money where their mouth is. You get what I'm saying? You yeah. say you motivate to help people, but you do it for the for the cause of money. So what I did was I created crown, Guns Down, Crowns Up. And what I do is I try to partner with local churches in, in, in other cities. And what I try to do is I try to get people to donate my funds to get to the next city for free. You get what I'm saying? So when my people can't afford to book me, the churches give me a venue, which is a community venue. We go into the churches. Um, nobody's really spending money. And we're giving them a message, man. We're yeah. giving them what they deserve. I don't care if you give me a dollar, 50 cents. 20 cents. Whatever you give, I'm giving you 110%. And the reason I'm able to do this is because when I had nothing, when I was poor, when I was broke, bro, every single day, and this is what I realized when a person really wants. A person that really wants what he talks about and what he dreams about will wake up and do it every single day, even though he knows he don't even have a meal at night. Yeah. Even though he knows he don't even know where he's going to sleep at night. He wakes up and he gives the world everything in his body. Everything in his body. Until somebody picks that gift up, that gift up and, and believes in it. Yes. Somebody and, needs and, to do that today. And, yeah, so, so, you know, that's my purpose, man, is to, man, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the world, King. Yes. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to do, do it because it. of me. Trust me, I was a special ed student back in Pontiac, Michigan. Couldn't read till I was 16, but if God can take me from a condemned apartment, sleeping in the back of a tourist, surrounded by drug dealers, prostitutes, and killers, mm. and send me to Milan wow. on an all expense pay, and when I finish the event, Philip Pine, the world-renowned designer, told me, congratulations, King. You just made history. Wow. That's so awesome. when I tell people, God is my biological father. Mm -hmm. I love and it. My father had to disappear for a little bit for me to see how important he was in my life. You know what I mean? Yes. And when when I started to realize this, when I when people used to say, oh Will, you becoming cocky, you becoming arrogant, you becoming this. They say my God is a jealous God. <laughs> you think about jealousy, jealousy is some kind of arrogance. People become jealous of you because they believe you're some kind of arrogant. You're better than them. You didn't tell them that you were better than them, but they told themselves right. that they were better than you. So what the excuse people use now is you're arrogant and cocky. I'm not arrogant and cocky. I bled for this. Mm -hmm. I damn near died for this. And when I was nothing, you didn't tell me I was something. So now that I feel like I'm something, don't you tell me that I'm cocky. Wow. I love that. You ain't got to support it, but you going to watch it, baby. Because guess what? When you get hired by God, King, your promotions is everlasting. Wow. 
And when God makes you rich on the inside, King, before he makes you rich on the outside, it ain't a man, woman, devil, demon that can buy you because God has given you every single thing you needed since the day you were born. Yes. And in order for you to connect with God and see the things that he wants for your life, you got to clean that temple, baby. God is a zealous God. God is a king. God likes to live in royalty. And no king I've ever known in my life ever lived in dirt. Mm. So if you want King God to truly live in your life and truly show you the crown that's not on your head but inside your heart and your soul, you got to clean that temple, baby. Once you clean that temple, that third eye open up. Yes. And you start to see the world. Like Nipsey Hussle said in a higher video, I'm starting to see this thing from a bird's eye view. <laughs> you know what he mean when he say that? I'm starting to see this from God's eye view. Mm. God will lift you so high, you will be looking down on people and you will see the moves before they even come, like a chessboard. Because once you attach yourself to God, and you don't got to go far because he already, you are a God. Yes. We are made in the image of him. You are a God. You just don't know your power, baby. They tried to hide it, baby. They tried to shoot them noses off all them royal kings in Egypt, baby. But they said 400 years of chosen people will be in bondage, but people don't know. In 2020, we are free. That would be 401 years. So when I say the kings are on the rise, we are truly on the rise. Let's go. We on the rise, brother. Nipsey Hussle was the sky. That was the sky. But wait till that thing here. Yeah, that was wait till that thing here. God had to show us one more thing, King. He had to show us financial literacy. Freedom is wealth. Yes. That's, that's we were born with wealth. Yes. So Think about a child, a king, that was born a king. And a group of people visited his home. Killed his mama, his daddy, annihilated his family and his culture, and took that crown away. My mission is to show that king of who he is and who took it away. Yeah. Hope y'all are getting it. He never left you, king. My mission is to show them it never left you. You've been royal, you've been royal since you were born, and you're gonna be royal when you die. And those people that held us in bondage, when we die, they will work for us. Mm. Mm. They will work for us. That's a word. But guess what? We won't whip them. We're going to treat them like royalty knows how to treat people. Mm. Because people don't even realize, they say the African American is the barbaric. We forgive and love more races than any people in the world. Truth. Truth. And let me tell you something about 2020. 2020 for King Hollister, remember I told you it's going to be huge. 2020 is the year that the eight ball stays on the table. Okay. If nobody knows, I'm going to give you a lesson right now. The game of pool was made by racist men. The green land on the table, the green cloth represents the land. The bars represent the cultures, the people. To win the game of pool, you must knock the eight ball in the pocket to win the game. What is the last ball left on the table? And what color is that ball? Black. Black. What is the last ball left on the table when the eight ball is in the pocket? White. That's solidified. If you knock off the black man, 
The world is ours. I learned this from a man named Dick Tracy. Mm. Wow. But this year, going into 2020, when the 400 years is up, that eight ball stays on the table. And guess what? The reason why that eight ball needs to stay on the table because everything that came from black, everything and every color came from black. And that's why, even when they created that racist game, they left, a, they left a piece of white right in the middle between the eight. We were so powerful that we we're part of everything. So if, we, if, we, if, if everything comes from darkness, how can we hate any other color? Mm. We never can. So for all the races that may watch this show or see this show, even though you hated us, we had no choice but to love you because you are us. <laughs> I love it. It's true. It's true. Some people just don't, don't want to admit. Don't want to hey, admit. Trust me. Trust me. My, my, my adopted mother is a small Jewish woman named Bonnie Dutton. So don't come at me as an extremist or a racist or, or, or call a five foot four Jewish woman. You want to love me. When my mother passed away, you know? So I got to see things from both sides and I got to love all people. But one thing I, 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 I won't do, I won't keep my mouth shut about who we are. Mm, I love it. Never. Thank a, man, you. A, a man that silences himself is, you're part, of the, you're part of the grand scheme like anybody else if you're silent. Well, hey, man, I, I know you got this this flight coming up this afternoon. Um, definitely want to respect your time. I got, just got a few more questions for you. Uh, one, uh, like I said, I really want to help your project. So tell me how I can get people in front of the information to be able to donate to your uh, Guns Down, Crowns Up tour. Uh, what I also oh. do, I can put together an article and stick a link in there that I can put in front of my reader base. Uh, I'd love okay. to do that for you. But you know, how can I get people to donate to this and help you out? Man, honestly, man, I, I, I tell people, um, all the people that want to donate to me, bro, I'm, I'm doing something right now where um, I'm doing consultations for free. Basically, um, talking about life, letting people ask me any question they want to ask me. And I'm doing online, I'm doing FaceTime phone calls. So when people donate, you're not going to have to read an article. You're going to come straight to the source, be able to ask me questions about it. Um, everything you need to know about what I'm doing. Even if, like I said, my donations, I don't want to be the donation where people just send their money and you don't know what's happening with it. I want to be the type of donations where, um, you know, even if it was like, Will, I live in San Diego. I want to bring you down to San Diego and do Guns Down, Crowns Up with you. Is that okay? Instead of donating, that's, that's even better than donating. You get me? My whole sole purpose, I'm independent. I'm not under any government system. I'm not any, under any of that stuff. I use my own money. And like I said, going back to my story, Kings and Queens, I started homeless. I've been motivating and inspiring people for over two to three years without any money. I'm talking about literally scraping coins and dimes together just to get on a bus, just to get places. You get what I'm saying? Now God is bringing me full circle in a better and in a more comfortable year. I'm a father, you know what I mean? Um, as much as I want to do for my people, uh, I can only do so much at this point. So at the end of the day, I need some of my people to get behind me, even if they got, even if it's not money. That's how that's how serious I'm about this. Even if you got flights that you can set up flights and help me get there for free, work at an airport, anything. I'm talking about a community effort to bring people a message for free, not charging them, not asking them to give you no money uh, uh, to get in the venue, not saying that I want to uplift my community and then charge people for me to come speak. That's not real. I don't care what you're saying. If you make a conscious decision to go out here and save the community, let the community be a part of it and let the community help you get it done. And my main goal behind this, King, is to build relationships with a lot of people all over in different cities, uh, even different countries. Because my main goal is to start my own boys and girls club. I can't tell you the name of it because I, I haven't got everything set up and solidified yet. 
but a, basically a Boys and Girls Club style funded by the community, not the government, not anybody, funded by the community. We build local businesses and we build things inside of that place where we raise money right there and right there and right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So all our money stay in the community. The first step would be, I want every single body in the city to meet me at this church. I need you to put a dollar in it. And I need as many as people in this community. If we got 1,000, 25,000, 100,000 in Oakland County, I need every single one of y'all to come bring me a dollar. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a, a community treasurer to take over that money, somebody that works at the bank. So I don't care if you just let pe help people set up bank accounts. If you got education in this, this is what I want you to teach. You get what I'm saying? If you oh, got yeah. education in, in, in fishing, sports, athletics, um, studio quality equipment, I want to start bringing these athletes, I mean, these musicians and these stars to the full fold of everything. Every community get an LLC, and I want you to start your own record label. I want you to keep all that talent that you have in your city, in your city, and you use the community dollars to push and market them just like a university or Rockefeller would do. That's how we build generational wealth, and that's how we take over what we want to take over. We have to keep the dollars in the community because at the end of the day, our 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 taxes on what we want when we buy homes, our property taxes, my far harder, is three times higher than our counterparts all over the world. So at the end of the day, if we want to grow our money, if we want to grow our community, we have we must have a bank, and those black banks that we do have and support must give us loans when we deserve it, without questions being asked. Yes. Yes. And that's how we build. I'm 100% on board with that. And there's a lot of different organizations. I'm sure you've seen them on Instagram as well. Uh, we Buy Black doing some great things. Uh, Black Wall Street. Uh, there's a lot of leaders that are... That and are I, want, I, want, I, I honestly, man, I want partnerships with all those people. Anybody see this? Any HBCU people? I, we are losing HBCU kids to different colleges. I want to be a part of the drive to bring us back to HBCUs and go out there and initiate and be the voice to let people know how important it is for us to be together more than ever before. Mm. It. It's time for that. It's time for that. And I don't feel that HBCUs, yeah, they got all these guys that's on radio, but you need somebody embedded in the community in these HBCU cities to make them understand that it's not, it's not a choice for you to go to HBCUs. It is your priority. It is your duty. It is your obligation to move the culture forward. All right. Love it. Thank you for saying that. And so I'm going to lead into these last couple questions here. Uh, just piggyback off of what you said. Uh, I know we came in unscripted, just figured we'd do what we do best, just speak from the heart right off the cuff. And uh, what you said just really leads into the final two questions I got for you uh, real perfectly. So I'm going to switch gears here on the visuals mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to pull up uh, a visual from our, our book that we've got coming out, uh, me and, and Hipterists. Uh, can you Can you see? Let me see if you can see these visuals. One second. Sorry here. Okay, buddy. All right. I just need to share. There we go. Technical. <laughs> All right. You able to see? Oh, 100 questions Black people should ask themselves in candid conversations by John Hall and J.D. Smith. Yeah, so this is coming out August 2nd, and uh, really me and my partner just wanted to create that conversation, you know, at the dinner table, in church, in the barbershops, nail salons, you know, town hall meetings, and all the questions that we have thought, and many questions that we haven't even thought. Um, this book will be uplifting. We are trying to shift mindsets, and we are trying to elevate the collective consciousness of the Black community. That's what this book is about. And so couldn't be more excited to be delivering this to everyone. And what we've been doing, we've been doing these discussions around this book, kind of making uh, teaser clips and, and conversations. So we'll, we'll take a couple sample questions out of the book and, and throw it out there and see how it lands with folks. So I'll, I'll just ask you something straight out of the book. Uh, just, just two questions, and we can we can cap off with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so first one is: What limiting beliefs do we hold 
that prevent black people from progressing? I think the belief that we belong, um, the belief that we're the outcast, the belief that that we're the second on the total pole. Mm -hmm. And what, what I want our people to understand and start to walk like and talk like is talk like you're the boss. Talk like you own this place. Talk like you built this place because you did. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people all the time, people are going to perceive um, what they think about you by the way you feel about yourself. So yeah. what I'm saying is until our people start to wake up in the morning and understand that you are a true blessing from God and that you are, you hold some of the gifts in the lessons that can literally change this world, people won't ever reach that greatness. A lot of people is going to die full and mm -hmm. live empty. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So don't be that person dying full and living empty. Mm -hmm. Because our sole purpose on this earth, I just believe that it's to empty the tank. It's to give every single thing we got. Right. It's to give everything we got in our hearts and our souls that God gave us to push the envelope forward. And like I said, the biggest problem, I believe, is we have a bunch of people like this. Our people are like pink bulls tied to a plastic chair. Hmm. <laughs> and we think it's heavy. Yeah. It's light. Right. Just move. Walk into who your destiny and know who you are. That's the number one thing I tell anybody that's watching this thing today. Find out who you are so you can go be who you were born to be. Mm. Believe in yourself. Believe you are enough. Believe you are great. Thank you. That's a great, that's a great answer. Appreciate that. So we'll close out with this. Next question. Do we really feel politicians and the government are going to make things better for us? Or do we need to create a plan to make things better for ourselves? Well, first of all, I, I, my opinion, if somebody was to ask me about this question, like you just asked me, I would say, you need to forget everything you ever learned about history. History is one of the most fabricated, fakest um, lies that you will ever see. It's just like this. It's like, um, a person giving a person a book and he let that person write that book before any of the other people got here. Okay, understood. So what I'm gonna do is, I like being the only person here, like being the only child, right? Then you take this book, I write this whole book before everybody else get here. And then I give that book to that person and that person say, oh, this gotta be real. This was here before I got here. Yes. Well, I, gotta, I just got a saying for you people. People tell lies before you were born. People mm -hmm. tell lies before you were born. But because you wasn't born, you believe it's real. But you have, we were taught in this world to do research. Mm -hmm. We were taught every Sunday when we go to church, we read the Bible so we can listen to the preacher and basically understand and break down what's right and what's wrong. That's why people pay attention so much. Some people just pay attention just to tell the preacher, uh -huh, you're wrong. That ain't right. But when it comes to life and history, we, we try to push it to the side. So what I'm telling my people is, forget about the government. Forget about the government. The government is a contract that you sign up for when you're born, and you become a part of that corporation. Mm-hmm. True. I want you guys to go do your research and start to thinking about a sovereign. Look up sovereign. Yes. That's what we were born to be. Independent that runs our own. Yes. And what the government does, they create fears. In false television, we call it telling lies to your vision. Wow. And they make us believe it's real. So what I'm telling you is, like Les Brown told me, and I'm gonna I'm use this as a whole people thing. The biggest mistake that we make as human beings is believing we need someone more than we need ourselves. Wow. That's real. That's it, baby. That's it in a nutshell. Mm. 
appreciate you answering that one. Um, no I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a bonus one so we can end on a real high note. Uh, I think it ties into everything that you've mentioned and, and brought to us today. <laughs> and so uh, one question I've got in the book, and just too many people don't think about this uh, day to day, unfortunately. Um, and here's the question. What is the greatest advantage of being black? We created everything. So we know how everything works. Now all we gotta do is license it. Start businesses and own it. Our advantage is hip hop. The biggest genre on the planet. For example, you for instance, a great king, pushing positivity throughout the universe. Can you imagine why Quavo or Offset or the Migos can't be on your show? If they post your show one time on their on they Facebook or Instagram page, you're instantly a breakfast club. Mm -hmm. Little brother. That's what we got. We got to stop letting the culture vultures win. Mm. Because they're attaching themselves to a culture that they hated their whole life. And now that that culture, man, do you see how powerful God made us, King? Man. Even through slavery, even through poverty, even through hangings and lynchings. Still here. Still we rise mm. as number one. When you talk about hip hop being the number one genre and the number one money maker on the planet, That's black people, man. Congratulations. Still we rise. Remember, remember what Martin Luther King said, I seen the mountaintop. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Plymouth Rock didn't, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. It's true. <laughs> so what we what I'm saying here, what I'm getting to. We never were knocked down from the top. Mm. They just tried to bury us. Yeah. But they didn't know we would see. You yeah. heard me what my <laughs> favorite saying. Good they stuff. didn't know we would see. Mm. I want you guys to look out for a speech. It is, it's an equality speech that I shot on top of Stone Mountain. I believe this speech is going to be the biggest speech of the year. Probably one of the best speeches of all time. Right. Um, it's coming soon, though, man. I'm getting the edits done now. But many of y'all don't know the history of Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain is the place where all the KKK members used to meet up and burn crosses on the top of it. So all the citizens of Georgia can stay in fear. Mm. But because of God and because of his grace and because of all them great men, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Farrakhan, all those great men that came before us, because of them, we able to stand on that mountaintop. And not only stand on that mountaintop, but tell them how we feel, baby. Yes. Hope everybody's hearing this. Tell them how we feel. Man, King, I appreciate you, man. I really do. Um, I would hey, love you to come out to Las Vegas one of these days. Um, just meet you face to face. Um, big supporter of everything you're doing. Whatever I can do in my work to, to be able to magnify things that you know in the world. Uh, that's part of my mission. I want you to know that. Absolutely, brother. Look, your gift as a writer, it, it, it will transcend further than any, any place you could ever imagine. And I, and I feel it. I mean, you got a book, book to release together one day. Man, <laughs> that, would be, that would be a blessing, for real. Man, you got a book to release one day, and, and I think you're going to help me bring that out of me. So I just want you to know, King, this just ain't no interview. You family, you a king. And I will be in touch, man. Um, I want to talk to you a lot more, King. And like I said, thank you for having me on my show, man. It's probably my, one of my favorite shows. Best questions I have all year, hands down. Wow. Bless. Man, I appreciate you. I want you to have safe travels, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit later. That's a bless. That's a bet, King. Blessings, man. Thanks so much. Yeah. Take care. You too, Chad.